Welcome to 5 Minute School. Today's video will be looking at venous return. So a quick definition of venous return is the return of the blood to the heart by the veins. Now venous return is very important in terms of um, end diastolic volume, stroke volume and cardiac output. And these, um, these uh, terms we've mentioned in previous videos and we've defined them as well. But just to go over them again. Uh, end diastolic volume is the amount of blood in the ventricles before contraction. Stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected from the heart. And cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped per minute by each ventricle. So it only makes sense that the return of blood to the heart by the veins would affect the end diastolic volume, stroke volume and cardiac output. All of these factors depend on venous return. Because if there was some problem with the return of blood to the heart, obviously the amount of blood in the ventricles before contraction would be affected so would the volume of blood ejected from the heart and so would the volume of blood pumped per minute by each ventricle because there's less or more blood returning back to the heart now following on from this it's important to note the pressure in the veins is what drives the blood back to the heart and this is known as venous pressure so venous pressure is the pressure which is inside the veins and this pressure is what's driving the blood back to the heart now due to a variety of factors the pressure in the veins is much lower than in arteries and I'm gonna make a separate video on this um, the differences between veins and arteries and also on capillaries as well so this should be uploaded very soon but anyway following on from this now I want to uh, mention another sort of term which is known as compliance and this would help you to understand uh, venous return a bit better so compliance is the ability to distend and distend sort of means like to swell up or expand the ability to distend an increase in volume in accordance to high pressure now veins have a much higher compliance compared to arteries because the walls are much thinner and less muscular so the veins can hold more blood so therefore following on from this you have something which is known as venous pressure and this venous pressure is what's initially driving the blood back to the heart and there's different um, sort of pressure levels in different sort of regions of the veins so you have venules which is uh, the follow on from capillaries so you have capillaries then venules and then veins so the venous pressure is going to be higher in the venules which is around 10 millimeters of mercury that's what the pressure is around about this amount and the pressure will be lowest at the junction of the vena cava and the right ventricle so this is right up near the um, the heart basically the in between the vessel going into the right ventricle in around this region basically so it's going to be lowest there and it's going to be zero millimeters of mercury so as you can see there's a there's a pressure difference so the pressure difference is what's going to push and drive the blood back to the heart so this pressure difference is what promotes venous return now there's three factors which I'm going to talk about uh, in terms of um, venous return so these factors are what influences venous return so we have the pumping from skeletal muscles so the contraction of skeletal muscles is something which squeezes the veins and this increases the blood flow so this would help in returning the blood back to the heart because uh, the squeezing action on the veins would push the blood and this would return the blood to the heart another factor is sympathetic nerve activity so this sympathetic nerve activity would stimulate the smooth muscle contraction in the venous walls and therefore compliance now the final one is respiratory activity so this is going to be in terms of the intrapleural pressure however this this factor this respiratory activity is fairly complicated so I want to make a separate video just dedicated to respiratory activity it's going to be the next video uploaded from this and I'm going to spend uh, some time just discussing the the respiratory activity and how it affects venous return okay so that's everything I want to discuss in today's video I hope you found this video useful and it's helpful in terms of uh, learning about venous return and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching be sure to subscribe to the channel 
and uh, yeah more videos will be uploaded very soon